Good morning, and welcome to our year of impact here at Rome Alliance Church. Thanks for joining us for this virtual service. To begin our time, write in the comment section where you're watching from. Could be your actual location, like Rome, New York, Whitesboro, Pennsylvania. We'll see where everybody's watching from this morning. Maybe you can write another thing, like your living room or your dining room with a cup of coffee. Let's see all the different places we are connecting from this morning because this is a virtual only service where we are hearing about the lives that have been impacted through the ministry of Rome Alliance Church. You know, as a church, we want to be a church that glorifies God, follows Jesus, and invites others to share in the hope, healing, and love of the gospel. Right there in our purpose statement, it's a statement of impact. We want to invite others to come alongside us as we experience the gospel, as we experience the hope, healing, and love of Jesus. If you're new today, welcome, special welcome to you. You'll notice above the video or around the video, there's a link to connect. Fill out our online connect card, and one of our leaders will follow up with you shortly after the morning virtual service. It's great to have you with us. It's great to, so, so you can hear everything God has been doing here at Rome Alliance Church. Well, when I say everything, it really isn't everything. When I think about a year of impact, for some reason my mind goes to John 21, verse 25, which is the last verse in the book of John, and it says this, Jesus also did many other things. If they were all written down, I suppose the whole world could not contain the books that would be written. It's amazing to think my mind goes wild thinking about all the other things that Jesus did while he was here on earth. This morning is just going to be a glimpse, an amazing glimpse, of many of the lives that have been impacted here at Rome Alliance Church. This isn't everything, but this is a lot of what God has done here. So, where do we begin? It's oftentimes that no one really wants to go first. So, I'm going to make him start first. Pastor John is going to join me to kick us off. Well, the first thing I have to do is find Pastor John. Most likely, he's probably downstairs guzzling all the Mountain Dew and orange soda that was left over. Typically, if I can't find John at church, he's downstairs guzzling soda. So, let me see if I can call for him. John, let's go, dude. It's time for you to, to get going with me. You ready? Oh, there you are. There you are. Uh, were you downstairs drinking Mountain Dew again? Yes. And so I just got to, whew. Okay. I'm good. Hi, everybody. Downstairs drinking Mountain Dew again? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, now yeah. that you're with us, we want to talk about the impact youth man mm -hmm. ministries had here at Rome Alliance Church. And to start us off, we want to talk about all the ways that the youth have been serving in and through the life of Rome Alliance Church. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's actually been really cool. We're t be talking about a year at Impact, and this year has been really impactful for our teens in terms of wanting to own their faith and step out and serve the church. And so we've had people singing up front on stage. You may have seen that on a Sunday morning. You may have been after our service been walking back, and you see some teams serving in the sound booth with the live stream with the slides. Kids are helping downstairs. You might notice that someone that's a, below the age of 20 is helping out with kids. It's been really, really awesome just to see the kids take a step out and serve in the church. In fact, you know what? I was just thinking of something. What? I think I have a video for oh, everyone. You do? You got yeah, one? yeah, I think I do. Let's fire up that video. Singing on the worship team and singing at youth group has impacted my life because before I was singing, church was just a place I went. It never felt like home, and I never understood why I had to go. I only went because that's what my parents told me to do. Now that I've been singing at church, I've realized that church feels more like a home now than a place. I love being able to share my talents that God has given me with others through music. Sermons never connected to me as much as music did. Sermons were just a thing I listened to and I never understood why I had to listen to them. Worship is my way of connecting with God. Worship is how I understand God's word and that is why I like doing it. Thanks, Hannah. Amazing impact that's being made in your life, but also our lives through what God is doing in and through you. One of the also great ways of the impact is simply what is happening in the youth ministry that happens on, on Sunday nights and at different points here. 
And as John's been on staff at Rome Alliance Church for a year and a half, we've seen a lot of great impact that is taking place. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, and so a cool testimony about the impact that we've been having here at Youth Group that God's been doing is this past Sunday we had a cool event uh, at Youth Group. We had the White Elephant Gift Exchange. And the reason why it was a testimony is we had 24 kids show up uh, between junior high and senior high. You're seeing some pictures of it right now. And it's really cool. The testimony in that is the fact that when we first started, or when I first started here, I had two kids, maybe three kids for senior high, and then around six kids for junior high that would come uh, during a youth group night. But then as we continued to grow and as we pour, as I poured into the kids, we had 24 kids show up between junior high and senior high. It's just a really cool um, thing to see the impact that God has been doing in their lives. Yeah, it's amazing, and just what a what a great group we have of kids. And one of the cool parts is that the lives of the kids being impacted are not just Rome Alliance Church kids. We have uh, teens coming from outside of Rome Alliance Church and being a part of the youth ministry. And that's a really cool way that you, church, are helping us impact the city of Rome is by the kids that are connecting to Rome Alliance youth. John, tell us about one. Yes, uh, we have a kid whose name is Parker, Parker Emery. But you know what? Instead of me talking about the impact that it has had on his life, I have a video that he talks about his story himself. Let's take a look at that video. Hey Parker, how are you doing? I'm doing good. It's great to see you. Great to see you too. So, I have a question for you. How has youth group impact, how has youth group made a difference in your life? Well, God has really impacted because he's been, I've been taught in sin and how you're supposed to follow the Holy Spirit to become like God. But you never do that. And well, if I if I'm here, it's I'm looking forward to something on Sunday. I'm not coming from the church and sitting in my room all day. I'm gonna come back and I'm actually gonna do something. Mm. Pretty much the main thing. And well, I get to play with friends. Like some of my friends from school come here, and it's actually a lot of fun. And I found about uh, out about it when I went to camp, mm. and you were a counselor there. So my mom said, "Hey, look, it's oh, it's a youth group." <laughs> so I joined the youth group, and it's been a great time. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, I was going to say, Parker, it's been really cool because I've just been able to hang out with you and get to know you, get to see uh, you hang out and get involved with the lesson. It's also really cool because a lot of the, a lot of the kids here grew up here at church, like their families would come to church, but you didn't. You went to Delta and you found out. About it. So it's kind of cool to see that. And um, it's just super cool to see how God has been impacting uh, your life and transforming you to be more like him as we talked about with the Holy Spirit uh, through youth group. And so it's just super cool to see So high five, my man. Amazing ways, and thanks, Parker, for sharing some of the impact Rome Alliance Youth have had, has had on your life. John, one other way that we've been able to have an impact is through the ministry of Delta Lake Bible Conference Center. And this past uh, summer, you were able to, to go and be a counselor at camp. And you know, church, one of the ways we've been able to have an impact is through the Bill Brown Camp Scholarship Fund. John, tell us, how many kids went on the Bill Brown Camp Scholarship Fund to camp this summer? Yeah, so we had 12 kids that went on scholarship for camp this summer, and the way that it worked um, is it was about $375 for kids to go to camp this year, and so what Delta Lake partnered with Rome Alliance Church with our fund is that they only had to pay a $75 deposit, and then the other $300 was covered through Delta uh, and then through us. And so we, we did 150 and then Delta matched 150 And so we were able to use scholarship money of $1,800 to send 12 kids to camp this year. That's really awesome. Thank you, church, for giving and giving to that Bill Brown Camp Scholarship Fund so kids can go to camp. Now, you might not know this, but in John's job description, ministry description, is partnering and really being at the, the camp's mercy uh, for some of the different youth things that they're doing so we can build partnership with them and connect the youth there to have an impact. John, tell us about what was your role during camp this summer? Whew, so I had the crazy but amazing chance to be a counselor there for the first time. And so you're going to see the picture. You're going to see a picture of me and the boys in my cabin. 
And what's really awesome is if you look at the middle with the red hat and the red shirt, that is Mason. Mason wasn't attending Rome Alliance Church before and wasn't attending youth group, but because I was the, I was the counselor for his cabin, him and his mom connected with me, and he's actually been attending uh, youth group every single week since, since Delta. And then if you, look to, if you look to my right, you'll see Kai in the background. You might recognize Kai. Kai has been coming to youth group here, and actually what's really cool is that Kai actually accepted Jesus to be his personal Lord and Savior at camp. Awesome. Uh, another really cool thing that happened at Delta is she's not in this picture because she's not part of my cabin, obviously. Uh, but Charlotte, Charlotte Swinney, she actually decided to take an ownership of her faith and decided to get baptized in front of everyone at Delta on the lake. And so it's just a really cool thing to see what God is doing in individual kids' lives through Delta and how God allowed me to be a part of that. Awesome. So we hear the amazing ways that the youth ministry is having an impact here. And we know this is one of the areas we have put special emphasis on here at Rome Alliance Church by uh, the role John has. And just we want to show you, church, the amazing impact it's having in and through the lives of the youth and teens and leaders here. Speaking of Delta Lake Bible Conference Center, it's amazing to see some of the things that have been going on there this past year. With that, people here at Rome Alliance Church have not only been impacted, but we've impacted them as well. Last week I caught up with Steve Clark, and let's hear what he has to say. Hey, this is Steve Clark at Delta Lake, and just want to take a few moments to, to reflect on 2021 and the many ways that Delta Lake and Rome Alliance Church uh, came together uh, and did ministry uh, in some new ways. So if we look way back to the spring, um, even in the midst of uh, the lingering pandemic when our normal camp programs still weren't operating, we began a print shop. And one of the first customers was Rome Alliance Church. Uh, Pastor Bryce and the team came and said, hey, we want to have some items that we can give to people that are visiting. And so we, we took the, the Rome Alliance Church logo, we made mugs, and we've done that multiple times now, which is exciting to think of uh, those visitors being able to come and have a little take home, a little thank you, a little gift from the church. Uh, then we got into the summer and our programs began again and to see the number of kids from the Rome area that were able to attend youth camp, it was exciting. It was great to see that way that we could work together through that scholarship fund and just the many uh, young people that were here at Delta Lake. And then at the end of the summer we began this new venture at, of the coffee shop and to see how the Rome Alliance family uh, and family members have gotten involved in all that's going on here. Whether it's the church purchasing coffee and using it, uh, whether it's uh, many that volunteer, uh, Jody Miola, uh, Tim Elmer, those that just give of their time and are here uh, almost on a daily basis helping us um, get products out and help spread the word of all that's going on. And then even Emily Rotenberry, who we've been able to hire and bring on as a worker here at the coffee shop. Just a lot of really great things. Um, it just strengthens a relationship that's been there for so long. Uh, but we're finding new ways to work together, new ways to, to spread the gospel. Uh, 2021's been great, and we're looking forward at all that's ahead and uh, ways that we can continue to work uh, to spread the gospel. Thank you. Thanks, Steve, for sharing. One of the people you talked about was Emily Rotenberry and the impact that the coffee roastery has had on Emily's life. Emily has some great words and thoughts to share about the impact not only Delta Lake, but generous roasting has made on her life. Um, I just want to say how generous roasting has an impact on me for the past three months. Uh, when I first heard that the coffee house was coming to the camp, I immediately got on board and wanted to help out with it. Um, when they offered me a job to work, they immediately said yes, and it's changed my life so much that I'm staying busy now. Um, I used to be depressed because I didn't have a job to go to or keep myself busy with all this free time. But now I have a job and it's working so much more, working so, so, so well. Um, I love working with the people that I love and I love working with the, helping out with the UCP people that come and help out. I'm using my gifts every day. It's really, very amazing to learn how the coffee shop to learn how the coffee beans are being roasted in the process that's been going with and we're keeping ourselves very busy very very busy during the during the weeks now and it's very very 
good and I've been feel like that this is perfect for me. That's the perfect opportunity to get to know my fellow um, co-workers well now. It's very, very awesome. Thanks, Emily. That was fantastic. Amazing to see what God's doing in your life. Have you ever been inside the coffee roastery? If not, I want to give you a little sneak peek of what it looks like. Speaking of year of impact, not only have everyone else been affected, but also so have the young adults. And it's actually really, really cool to see the impact on the young adult group that we've had here at the church. In fact, Bryce and I, when we were talking about all the young adults that come to the church, we, when we were compiling a list, we had around 35 people that are between the ages of 18 to 35 in the church. Not all of them attend the young adult group, but we've been able to connect with them, and we have 35, we have 35 people in that area. And so what I want to show you right now is I want to show you a testimony of a couple of people who have been a part of the young adult group and how that being a part of that and being connected with the body of believers has had an impact on their life. Let's throw up that video. Hi, my name is Josh and I'm a member of the young adults group here at Rome Alliance Church. And when I first moved to Rome a couple of years ago, this was a new city for me and I kind of felt disconnected. I didn't really know anybody, but when I joined the church here and when I joined the young adult group, I, I found that I was part of this new community of believers and, and it provided me with, with a good source of fellowship. So Richard, last year, this past year, 2021, uh, it has been a little crazy, but it also has been very good. I've been, I'm enjoying hanging out with you in the young adult group. And so I just wanted to ask you the question, how has being engaged with being a young adult group had an impact on your life? Yeah, so coming to the young adult group, I think has definitely helped me stay consistent in coming to church. And it, I'd say it's definitely brought me out of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, I know I've hosted it at my house a couple of times, and that's something I normally wouldn't do, but it was a lot of fun. And I was glad to be able to, to have a great group over. Um, it's definitely let me talk to people that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. Yeah. yeah. So that's been cool. And I'd say just faith-wise, it's it's made me have to be more consistent as far as reading the Bible or or just coming to church and things like that. So I'd say it's definitely been helpful to to share my story, to, to hear other people's stories, and to just be in fellowship with a great group of people. That's awesome. And it was really cool, too, uh, because when he hosted, he hosted a Friendsgiving at his house for the young adult group. And it was cool because we had a, a group of people that were so uh, different in personalities, but we all came together because we love Jesus and we got to have the fellowship. And so it was cool just to see him, uh, as he was saying, open up and do stuff he wouldn't normally be able to do and grow out of his comfort zone. And so I just wanted to thank you because it was really cool to see you be able to do that. And so thank you very much, Richard. <laughs> Another way that people have been impacted in and through the life of Rome Alliance Church is women's ministries. We're going to have a couple different videos and testimonies of some different things that are taking place. Cindy, give us just a quick couple sentence glimpse into some of the impact made in the ladies' Bible study this fall. Well, we're really excited to have more leaders. Um, that's something we've been working on for some time. So we have six different tables, and each table has two leaders. And um, we're... I mean, that's a answer to prayer, and we have the capability to grow our group because each of those leaders could then lead another table as more people come. So that's exciting. Um, we've also seen, like this study that we've just finished is Romans 12 by Chip Ingram, and the challenge to live that Christian life that we learn about. So one of our uh, chapters that we had was about serving others and being aware of needs around you and then how do you meet those needs. And one of the needs that we've been noticing is, or that we were made aware of, is the MOPS group would really like to have a Bible study, but they, how to do that. 
Um, so with some prayer and God kind of led us to, we could do it on the weeks that they don't meet. Uh, they meet every other Wednesday. So the Wednesdays that they're not meeting for mops, we could do a Bible study with them. So who's going to do that? That's the big question. That's right when we were studying about serving others. And um, I challenged them to pray about it and see how God might lead them. And one of the ladies came back and said, I prayed about it and God led me so specifically. He said to me, what are you doing for my children? And I knew he was telling me I need to help with this Bible study for mops. And another gal joined in and said, I will do that with you. So we have two that are going to work with childcare throughout the study. And another lady was praying about it, but didn't think it was possible. And she said in our sharing time, I'm in, I'm helping too. So we see how God's impacting lives and how people are stepping outside of their normal comfort place to do something different to help others. Hi, I'm Paula, and this is our new friend, Ann Hamlin. Ann has an exciting story to share with us how Alliance Women has impacted her life. Ann? Thank you. Um, Alliance Women, I, um, I'm not going to say by accident, but um, the Lord gave me a scripture that he puts the solitary in families. And I was praying that scripture for several years. However, I moved here from Rochester and I went to Alliance Women, the retreat that they had. But I thought that I was going to another function, not even in the same month. However, um, I was greeted with so much um, friendship and love, and they made sure that I was totally included in everything they were doing, whether it be breakfast or lunch, or, you know, just sitting with, with people that had already introduced themselves to me throughout the conference. And since then, I've been coming to the church and going to the Bible study, and Rome, the Alliance Women group, the Rome Alliance Church, uh, knows the meaning of friendship. And I've learned that I've learned how to be able to be able to just belong here and not have to worry about who I am or what I am. So I have to thank everybody. And that's our theme is belong. So a place to belong. And we are so thrilled that you accidentally, <laughs> by God's divine interaction brought you to us and uh and made you one of us thank you we love you Anne. yeah we do. i love you guys <laughs> oh my goodness hi i'm jenny and i want to share two things i love about mops the first is i started coming to mops as a new mom with my daughter and i always felt like when i came to the meetings that God would give me some kind of encouragement, some kind of little nugget that I could take with me through the week. And it just helped me know that like he was with me in this new journey I had begun of motherhood. Um, whether it was something in a video or discussion, there was always a little something that I felt like he was saying, like, I'm with you. I'm here. I'm with you in this. And um, I needed that. I really did. Another thing I love about MOPS is the friendships and the community. I think we need each other. And I. it's so good to know I'm not alone in trying to raise my daughter to love Jesus and to instill that faith in her. And um, it's just always encouraging and inspiring and motivating to be around other moms who are trying to do the exact same thing and to sort of spur each other on in that. I think MOPS is super powerful. I believe in it like 100% because I think we need each other. And um, if we just, I think we need, we need this, we need each other. And it's a place to fill ourselves up and to fill each other up. This year, some of the greatest impact has been in and through the life of the staff here at Rome Alliance Church. Karen came on staff this past year. And Karen, tell everybody about the impact coming on staff has made in your life. Well, first off, it was unexpected. Um, I didn't expect to be on staff here <laughs> at all. Um, did not see that coming at all. Um, but through volunteering and with the different ministries here, um, I found myself wishing that I could one day work here. 
Um, and sure enough, that happened. <laughs> um, God answered that hope that it had in me. It wasn't something that I really prayed for. Um, but it was really like a dream job that just kind of like landed in my lap. Um, Pastor Bryce one day called me up and said, hey, we're thinking about um, this position and we have you in mind. Um, we we're praying about it and we think you'd be great for it. And yeah, I immediately said yes. I um, didn't know how I was going to do it because I was Never already working. Saw a job description, but I'm doing it. <laughs> I was already working like two other jobs. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, I definitely know that I, I, I need to do this and I want to do this. I just don't know how it's going to work out. And then actually like down the road, like I ended up giving my giving up my full-time job. So <laughs> it's been really cool. I've learned a lot of really cool things. Um, and I just hope to continue and gr to grow in that. Really awesome. And, and I think oftentimes we can overlook impact happening in top level leaders' lives, but this is someone who's uh, started coming to church here and then transitioned to coming on staff here. And it's really cool just to see the, the change in, in her life as she's taken on uh, more roles and additional roles here at church. And so what a cool way for you to step outside of your comfort zone, but also take steps of faith by uh, you know, stepping away from your other full-time position to step even more into other places where God's called you to go. And what a cool thing. And I'm sure all of you can find ways and think of ways how Karen coming on staff has impacted your ministry by some of the videos she's made or some of the graphics she's helped made or the impact she makes every week by sending the on mission together. Uh, but more than just the physical things, it's really cool to see the impact that uh, this church has had on your life by God calling you into more of a ministry role here. So we're excited and uh, we're thankful for the impact it's made in your life. We've been gathering videos and talking with different people about this year-end virtual impact service. I began to realize that impacting other people's lives makes them impact other people. I want to first start with Chris Roy in men's ministry. Hi, I'm Chris Roy and I oversee men's ministry here at Rome Alliance Church. And we're really excited to share with you uh, today just a highlight from this year. You know, men's ministry uh, really has a goal of engaging men, not to just come to men's events, but our, our focus this year was to intentionally have men that, that served in other areas of the church that really got plugged into the church body. And I'm really excited because I'm sitting here with Jason uh, this evening. And Jason, um, what's an area of growth for you individually this year, would you say? So I joined the men's ministry and went to a few of the men's group, and then I was asked if I would be one of the volunteers to help with the kids' ministry downstairs because, mm -hmm. you know, they said they wanted more uh, men's faces down there working with the kids, and so I decided to take the leap and do that, and uh, I've been helping out downstairs, and I've really enjoyed that, and uh, my son, he helps out with youth group, and he does youth group, and he helps out with the audio visuals during you know, the services and my boys, my younger boys are part of, you know, the youth group downstairs and the kids ministry. And it's just everything that I do, you know, flows into them and they just love coming here and everything like that. And we all like to help out as much as we can. Yeah, I really like it because it, it kind of goes past you and it, and it goes down with your kids as well. So um, have you had any interesting interactions volunteering downstairs or... Um, I don't know, just any highlights to share just from kind of stepping into that role or in general? Um, just, I, I like it. I didn't know what it would be like at first. I was, you know, I, I was nervous, you know, sure, I've sure. never, you know, done anything like that. Um, but I, I like it a lot. I just like being there and I like, uh, just helping out as much as I can with the kids whenever, you know, they have their program going. And I just love, I just love seeing, you know, the effect that the church in a whole has on all the kids that come here and everything like that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jason, for uh, sharing uh, today and just a great example of seeing uh, men plugged into another area of, of church. And we look forward to seeing uh, what God's going to do in 2022. As I watched that video, to me, it's amazing to think about. At this time last year, we were showing Jason's story about coming to faith in Christ in our year-end congregational meeting. And now, fast forward a year, sitting here at the end of 2021, we can see how Jason has come to faith in Christ and now is uh, serving in other ways. And so Jason came to RAC and was impacted, 
and now he is impacting other people through kids' ministry and through men's ministry and these other areas that you've heard in his life. We can also see that how his kids' lives are being impacted as well through Jason's connection. What an amazing thing to see. Another area is kids' ministry. And we're going to see how Kaylee Roy's life is being impacted and how that is going to now impact the lives of so many other people. A couple weeks ago, I caught up with Kaylee, and let's hear how her life is being impacted. I'm here with Kaylee Roy, and we are talking about this year of impact. And with children's ministry, there's a lot taking place, but one of the greatest impacts is personally in Kaylee's life. So, Kaylee, tell everybody here at Rome Alliance Church just some of the things that are, is going on in your life and some next steps you're taking with kids' ministry. So I am currently taking a leadership certificate course, and that will enable me to run children's ministry not only at the level with the kids, but also with the volunteers, scheduling, all that stuff that really gets tied into children, children's ministry that makes it run smoothly. Um, it's just a great way to develop my leadership, and essentially that will trickle down to every aspect of children's ministry as well. Yeah, and tell, tell everybody, who is this uh, certificate through? It's through the Alliance. Um, it's really well done. Um, my teacher's name is Haley. She's, I actually had the opportunity to meet her on Zoom yesterday. Really nice lady. Very solid. She's been in children's ministry for like 10 plus years. So the amount of knowledge she has to offer is just incredible. And she's actually been doing the course for about five years. Yeah, that's great. And as we talk about impact, it's cool. The Alliance actually has a lot of different opportunities for further uh, development with uh, education and training as they have an Alliance Center for Leadership. And this is what uh, Kaylee's taking advantage of, uh, that they have this leadership certificate course. Uh, just tell everybody um, why. I know you've kind of talked about the, the perspective of like the things that you'll gain out of this, mm -hmm. but, but what in your heart said, I, this is something that, that God was calling you to do? Well, for those who don't know, I did go to school for teaching for, you know, for a while there. And then I kind of fell off of it, and I was like, all right, you know, got all these skills. I'm not really sure where to apply them. Um, and then I started to come to Rome Alliance Church, and I started to get involved into teaching, volunteering with the kids. And God really pressed it on my heart, and it's like, I've equipped you with these skills. You know, you have the teaching background, and now this is where you're going to go with it. So when this course came up and I had the opportunity to talk to Lisa and she's like, yeah, you, you know, you could be a children's ministry director. There's this amazing course. So much like everything else God has done in our lives, he prepared it way in advance before I even knew it. So just having that background and just say, hey, this is where you need to go. This is your next step. Yeah, that's really awesome. And that's the really cool uh, perspective we get to see looking back in our life that sometimes we're not sure why we're going through certain things or why the certain things take place or why we're uh, going after something and we see how God uses it years down the road. So it's really cool to how those dots have connected. Just last thing, uh, you've already started this course. Mm -hmm. What's the greatest thing you've taken away so far from your time in the certificate program? Oh, there's a lot of things that, first of all, I've had the amazing opportunity to read great books. I love to read. Um, I like the very practical book, talked about the structure, and then there's this amazing book called the Bible Handbook. And it's a great way to look at the Bible from a historical, cultural, all these different aspects. So I love to learn. And anything I can learn more about the Bible is great. And then pass that along to the kids and the volunteers is an awesome opportunity. That's great. And so as we uh, talk about kids' ministry, this really isn't necessarily as much focused on the kids. However, though, when leaders are developed and leaders are changed, automatically that has an impact on the lives of the people they're leading. And so we're excited to see you continue to go through this, this, this course. You said it ends about March. Yeah. So she'll finish this course around March and have the certificate of uh, the children's ministry. And so we're just excited to see how this continues to work out in your life, but this is an awesome way of impact of someone here at Rome Alliance Church taking it upon themselves, taking the initiative to take steps forward to grow themselves and to step into new areas of ministry. And this is a great uh, way of impact that's taking place here at the church. All these stories are amazing to hear. It's amazing to see what God has been doing in and through the lives of people through the ministry of Rome Alliance Church. 
is we join on Sunday, join a group, and join a team, we are making an impact. It's amazing to see. As we begin to close our time together this morning, Mark Southcott is going to bring a word of encouragement on what we can do to make an impact in other people's lives. As Mark and Patty uh, transition and leave well from Rome Alliance Church, Mark is going to give us one last encouragement and charge as a church to be people of impact. Merry Christmas, Rome Alliance. One of the first things that I think about when I think about Christmas from a biblical perspective and not a cultural perspective is the impact that the coming of Christ has had on my life and many of your lives and the lives of so many people that I know and I pray someday the lives of everyone that I know. If we look through the Bible, the coming of Christ and the impact it's had is actually part of a pattern, not an isolated incident. From creation to the giving of the law to the coming of Christ to his death and resurrection, his eventual return, the actions of God have a huge impact on our lives as believers and the lives of everyone in this world, even if they aren't willing to admit it yet. God's actions, that impact that his actions make is born out of his love for us. And Ephesians 5 verses 1 and 2 tells us to be imitators of God by living lives full of love, the same love that Jesus displayed through his sacrificial death, the same love that's had such an impact on our lives. And if we really are followers of Christ, if we really are Christians, because that's what the word Christian means, follower of Christ, then our lives should have an impact on those around us, just like God, who we are imitating, has had an impact on those around us. And it's always scary, isn't it? When someone's preaching and they use that horrible word impact or they challenge you because talking for myself, they say that and I think, oh my gosh, they want me to go to a, a gas station and go talk to some random guy. I don't do that. Or I think they're going to challenge me to go talk to a friend of mine that I know isn't a believer and just show up and out of the blue, hey, Joe, let's, let me walk you through Roman's road. Yeah, that's going to be great for our relationship. I, if Joe's interested, if Joe says, Mark, I know you're a believer. Can you tell me a little bit more? Yeah, I'll walk him through Romans Road. But you asked me to do that cold turkey? Mm -mm, no. It, for you, maybe it's something different. I know people who will sit down with a stranger. They'll see a stranger, go talk to him. And before they're done, they've walked him through Romans Road. I am not wired that way. You might be wired differently. Maybe that's normal for you, but maybe the thought of getting up in front of people and speaking is freaky. Maybe the thought of helping watch someone else's toddler is what freaks you out. I don't know, but I'm not asking you to do any of those things. I'm asking you to do something a lot simpler, but I think with a bigger impact. I'm asking you to live out the fruit of the spirit in your lives. Do you know the impact that joy and kindness can have? I do from one example, and I think you do too. Once I get going on the story, you'll probably recognize it. Uh, several years ago, Shelly Mudry was being Shelly Mudry, a kind and pleasant person to be around. And I'm sure she has her bad days. I haven't seen any. Generally, she is a very kind and pleasant person. And that consistent kindness and pleasantness was enough to catch no the notice of somebody at her work who got to know Shelly and found out that a big part of who Shelly is comes from her identity as a Christian, as a follower of Christ. And a major part of that relationship that Shelly has with God is born out of the relationship she has with her church, Rome Alliance. So this guy decided eventually he wanted to check it out. You might know his name. His name's Chris Roy. After a while, Chris came to know the Lord. And a while after that, his wife, Callie, gave her life to the Lord. 
And now Chris is leading men's ministry and Callie is leading children's ministry. That whole watching other people's toddlers thing. Scary. The impact that has been had in Chris and Callie's lives and the lives of the men that Chris leads and the children that Callie mentors and leads stems out of simple joy and kindness from Shelley. That kind of impact from simple kindness isn't an isolated incident or a new phenomenon. It was actually the basis for Paul's approach to establishing the gospel in Crete. Take a look at Titus chapter 2. Paul has sent Titus to Crete to correct and lead the church there, which had brought their culture into Christianity instead of allowing Christianity to bring them out of their culture. Crete was home to several wealthy cities who made money because they have some of the best ports in the Mediterranean. I'm a sailor. I love sailing. I hope to visit some Cretan ports at some point. They were living the first century, first world lifestyle. There was a social elite that was extremely wealthy. Uh, that social elite was ruled by the patriarchy, the older men of each family. They had near total authority in their families and in their communities. And they wielded that in authority like it was a stick. Um, in addition to that, it was a Greek culture. And as part of that Greek culture was the worship of the Greco-Roman gods, a large part of which included temple prostitution. Uh, promiscuity was rampant, both from the men and the women. It was a huge issue, and it was an issue that was being brought into Christianity. Uh, the slaves who lived there, who had given their lives to the Lord, felt that their freedom in Christ meant they owed nothing to their human masters, and especially if those human masters were fellow believers. And while you know, I'm, I'm good with that, it was giving Christianity a black eye because everyone was saying, oh, yeah, Christian's all about slave revolt, which was not doing wonderful things for the word of God in Crete. So Paul writes to Titus, leaving instructions for all demographics to live in a way that was radically countercultural, but also it was really simple. So we're going to go through a couple verses at a time, looking at the different demographics that Paul has laid out, what that meant to them then, and then we'll break it down afterwards. So in verse 2, it says, teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self-controlled and sound in faith, in love, and endurance. So in Cretan society, the Cretan society that was led by lazy, drunkard, old men, temperate, respect respectable older men stood out to the point that it was Paul's belief that that would have an impact for God, an impact for the gospel, to not be drunkards, temperate, and to be self-controlled. This is countercultural and highly impactful for the society of Crete. And yet I, I hope we can both agree that it's not a huge challenge. Verses three through five, likewise teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. I'm going to break there for a second and point out the first thing they say is teach older women not to promote gossip, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine. There is, there is a big issue with wine here. The older men and the older women both have been singled out by Paul to say, stop being drunkards. He then transitions to the younger women. 
Then they can teach the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands so that no one will malign the word of God. I'm going to touch on two things. Um, the self-controlled and pure is really reaching back to the issue of promiscuity and uh, temple prostitution that was common in the culture and especially common because of how wealthy Crete was. The second thing, to be subject to their husbands, again, remember the culture that they are in is a deeply rooted patriarchal culture. Other sections in the Bible emphasize mutual submission. Because of what Paul is addressing here of Christians behaving in ways that offend the people around them, Paul is writing to have Titus instruct the young women, the young married women, that even though you are free in Christ, and even though God views you young women as equals to your husbands in his eyes, out of respect for the culture, to not make the cross an offense to someone unnecessarily, be subject to your husbands in the way that culture would expect you to. So here we've got Another one simple, avoid the temple prostitution and um, the promiscuity that is rampant in Cretan culture. And one that I, I think we'll probably agree is, is harder, but ideally in families of um, two believers should be doable in a way that's pleasant to both, that the wives be subject to their husbands, that there is loving submission to each other. Those are the, the big points that Paul has for the younger women. So right now, we haven't been moving mountains with this. For the older generation, stop being drunk. Be respectable. Don't backbite, slander, and gossip. For the younger generation, we'll hit the young men now. Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. And here, Paul transitions uh, in verse 6. He transitions from speaking to the young men in general to Titus in particular, because Titus is a young man himself. Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled in everything. Set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. I'm going to point out something here. Paul does not say so that no one will oppose us. He says those who oppose us will be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. We have to face it. People will always oppose the message of the cross. The difference and what Paul is addressing is are they going to oppose it based on the merit of the way Christians behave or misbehave? Or are they going to oppose us baselessly because we live lives according to God? And Paul is saying, stop living in a way that encourages, that gives ground for people to oppose the cross. Start living in a way that gives them no ground. So when they oppose the message of the gospel, they're ashamed. And hopefully that shame will lead to repentance. And if you look through this section to the young men, once again, self-control comes up. It was an issue for the older men. Perhaps not a shock. The example set by the older men has led to issues for the younger men, and it has to be addressed there. Be self-controlled and do what's good. Do what is good with integrity. Not big things. Do what's good. Teach with integrity. Be self-controlled. We're not moving mountains. We're not running off into the Amazon rainforest to find some unreached tribe. Just where you are, do what's good. Now to the slaves in verse 9 and 10. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything, to try to please them, to not to steal from them, 
but to show that they can be fully trusted so that in every way they will make the teaching about God our Savior attractive. Be trustworthy and don't steal. Again, not moving mountains. This is the big ask from Paul for Christian slaves. It's, it's not condoning slavery. It's saying this is the cultural context that you're in. We're not changing these things overnight. Within your cultural context, live in a way that honors God and brings honor to God. Be trustworthy and don't steal. That was his instructions to the slaves. So that that's it. Those nine verses, those nine verses are Paul's master plan for kickstarting the gospel in Crete. That's wild. It's simple. It's so simple, it's wild. And I've pointed this out a few different in a few different places. That was his master plan in the context of the Greek culture that Crete had. Which means while there's biblical principle, godly principle in there, it's not necessarily a one-to-one for our cultural context. We don't live in America in a slave-owning patriarchy that idolizes alcohol and promiscuity. Okay, maybe the last two, last two might work, but we're not a slave-owning patriarchy anyways. Um, so how do we have an impact in our cultural context? I've asked myself this, and I've come up with three things that I want to share with you. The first is to be kind. We are a people driving for the next thing. From fast food to videos on demand, to stores that have Valentine's Day stuff up, and Christmas isn't even over yet. You're watching this on December 26th, so Christmas is over for you, but it's not over for me. Time travel. Um, I need to take the time to be kind and not just indifferent to those around me. I do a great job, gas station example, I walk in, I go from my car to the thing I'm going to get, and I go back to my car. Yes, I may, in the very likeness of Jesus Christ, bearing his cross up that hill, I may open the door for someone else and say, you're welcome. It's not huge. If someone has something on their heart and they're just looking for someone to extend that hand and say, hey, I'm here. Hey, I care. They're not going to see that in me. It's something I need to change. I'm, I believe, just like Shelley's kindness made an impact in Chris's right, life and Callie's life, and they're making impacts in our lives, that actual kindness from me in a public setting will make an impact in someone's life. The second thing is choose to love. Our culture is deeply divided across many lines. You probably didn't need me to say that. From gun rights to vaccines, I'm not going to touch that one any further, to abortion. I have opinions on all of those and so many more things, but can I set aside my preferences and listen to the hurts, the fears, the hopes of those around me on either side of those divisions? Can I be a bridge, not to a different cultural side, but can I be a bridge to the cross for those people? Can I listen to someone whose family heritage is hunting and he's has cherished family heirlooms that are firearms that bring him back to his father and his grandfather and his great grandfather and the way that um, the public discourse about guns is going makes him afraid or perhaps he's had to surrender those guns and now he's harboring hurt over that. Can I, can I show love to him and turn around and show love to the person who grew up in the inner city and their only exposure to guns is gang violence? 
Am I able to love both of those people? Am I able to love the person who is terrified of raising a child by themselves and love the person who hates abortion and those who partake in abortion? Am I able to love both sides there? That's hard. It's important that doable part is for me to let go of myself to say Mark Southcott's opinions don't matter here. The love of God matters here. And I need to bring that into this situation. The third one for me is follow through. Our culture is notoriously faithless from politicians going back on their word to husbands breaking marriage vows. I need to be faithful to my word. I've seen faithful men and those faithful men have had an impact on me. I know the impact that faithfulness can bring. So those are three simple things, not always easy to live out in day-to-day -day life, but they're doable. It's not selling everything and going and living like a beggar. It's not committing 80 hours a week to a soup kitchen. It's not Bible thumping every person that you come across. There's, there's simple, reachable things that can have a huge impact in our world. How do you then, for yourself, because my cultural, my cultural reference, because of who I'm around, the job I do, is probably different than yours. So my challenge to you as you think about the impact that the coming of Christ has had with Christmas that we celebrated yesterday, what are a couple things that you can do in the spirit of what Paul wrote to Titus for the Cretan church? Except now, instead of their culture, for your culture, what are those things? God, I thank you for the impact that you have had on my life and on the lives of so many that I know. God, I pray that that impact would move beyond me and the people I know um, who have been saved, Lord God, but to impact those that I know who haven't been saved and people that I don't know, God. Let your work reach through me to impact those that I will never see, God. I love what Mark challenges us with there. What can you do? Church, being a people of impact, is something that each of us have the opportunity to do. Whether it's the person sitting next to us on a Sunday morning, the person that I get to be a part of in my ministry, maybe it reaches out to my next door neighbor or a coworker, that each of us have the opportunity to impact other people. Mark gave us some ways we can do that as how we interact with culture and how we live that out by being kind and, and choosing love and following through. But what is it that you can do? Encouragement as we look into the year 2022. Whose life are you going to impact? All of us have the opportunity to do so. And as people who want to glorify God, follow Jesus, and invite others to share in the hope, healing, and love of the gospel, my encouragement to all of us is that we would be people of impact. No matter what stage of life we're in, no matter where we find ourselves, God has given us for what we need in this season and in this way to be people of impact in our own unique ways and gifts and callings. My encouragement, again, in charge is what can you do? How are we going to be able to tell stories next year of the ways you have impacted other people's lives? Maybe, again, you're new or watching for the first time. I encourage you to watch next Sunday or join us in person we have two services at 9.30 or 11 o'clock to come and join and be a person of impact as we look to be a church that joins on Sunday, joins a group, and joins a team.